Hello, I'm Representative John Bell, and with me I have our Senator, Senator Jim Perry. Uh, we just actually finished up session, and we actually did what's called sine die, which is the official ending of the, the biennium session here in Raleigh. And before we left, we uh, actually passed a $1.1 billion uh, COVID relief package, and which is going to be really beneficial to the citizens of our district and all of North Carolina. Uh, that's right, John. We, we've done some really good things, I think, to help parents with child care related issues. Uh, we know everyone's been carrying a burden during the pandemic and, and under these executive orders. So we have provided $35 million for licensed child care centers to help them operate while they're under capacity and, and facing a lot of regulation. Additionally, we've added uh, $8 million in grants to help working parents with their child care costs because you know people have a lot on them right now. Uh, also, we added a $20 million grant program for community-based organizations like uh, Boys and Girls Clubs or YMCAs. And we loosened red tape on regulation that would uh, prevent parents from using community-based centers or parents getting together to provide child care and getting creative. That's very important in our rural areas. Uh, they must still pass the same uh, COVID sanitation regulation as any other center, and they must register with the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, additionally, we, we found the money to provide a one-time $335 payment to families to uh, help them offset the cost uh, that they've incurred as a result of school closures. Yeah, a lot of this red tape that we, we've seen cut, especially on the child care side, is going to be really beneficial to our folks back home. Yeah. And uh, frankly, a lot of questions that, that you and I both get. Uh, I will tell you that in the last 10 years, Republicans have really taken a, a big step in trying to solve the broadband connectivity problem across our state. And uh, with the initiatives that are coming to pass with the Great Grant, we actually added $30 million more for the Great Grant program to improve rural broadband all across our state, which is key for our district. Uh, and then you look at the struggles people are having with unemployment. Um, we actually increased that by $50. And so that's going to be a, a help to, to folks that really need that the most. And, uh, and then we have a whole homeless provision for our school districts. I know you and I have both talked about, uh, you know, what's happening with declining enrollment, people choosing to do the virtual, people choosing to do private, uh, actually even homeschool. And so the, the LEA home harm is actually going to be a big deal for our folks back home. I think it is. You know, the rural areas would have the hardest time absorbing those costs. So I think it's important to give them some stability and, and help during this time. Uh, we also took steps to help the business community. We provided a another $45 million for small business grant program. Additionally, we have uh, added another $75 million for personal protective equipment and testing. Uh, we've added $34 million of testing. So for testing, I, I think that's now over $150 million uh, since the, uh, the short session started and during these, these additional special sessions. So we're really investing in the healthcare space. And, you know, I encourage everybody that's watching to actually go view, go to the nclg.net website and, and pull up the COVID package and actually look for everything that went into it because it's pretty a, a robust bill. But but one of the, the big initiatives that you and I have worked for since you've been up here, and, and frankly, we've been dealing with for a number of years, is the hurricane relief right. package. Right. And and you and I both have told our constituents back home that are affected by Hurricane Matthew, Dorian, Isaias, that we would never forget them. Right. And we put additional $4.4 million into hurricane recovery, not just for this storm, but also past storms. And we're also able to come in and, and, and do uh, funding for our friends there in Bertie County that were affected by the tornadoes and our friends in Allegheny County up in the mountains that, that were hit real hard with the, the earthquake. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think there's ever been any perfect legislation in the history of our state that really touches everything you want to, to be able to help. But this is certainly a a great step, I think a, a good use of these funds and should be very helpful to all North Carolinians. I'm proud of the work the Republican majority has done, not just this session, but for the last, last 10 years. And I look at the strides we've made. We continue being the, the number one state to do business. We have moving trucks coming in here. People want to be a part of what's happening here in North Carolina. And, and you know, you know, all this has taken work. We had to restructure our tax code. We had to restructure our unemployment claims. You know, we, we had, to, had to do a lot of work to get us here. And even though we're in the middle of a pandemic and we are going to have some budget strangleholds moving forward, I feel like North Carolina is going to be better than 49 other states in the country. I, I don't think there's a doubt about that. We're, we're well positioned with the, the dollars that we have in our uh, rainy day fund and the unreserved cash balance that we have to, to be able to weather the storm. Uh, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough, but I agree. We're in great shape as compared to many other states. We still have a lot of work to do. Uh, as you know, North Carolina's a growing state. We still have a lot of needs out there. And uh, on behalf of myself and Senator Perry, for the folks that have been um, 
impacted by, by the COVID-19 pandemic and have lost loved ones or have been sick themselves. And our thoughts and prayers go out, go out to all of you and know that we're gonna be here in Raleigh doing everything we can to continue to work for our citizens back home. And our office and doors are always open, so please contact us if you need anything. I think that's it, thank you. Thank you.